Heavenly Father, we thank you for not allowing the evil ones to take over. Father, we say thank you for being in charge of our life and the affairs of our life. Father, we say thank you. Give him all the glory. Magnify his holy name. David said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, for all his benefits, for protecting our lives, for redeeming our soul. Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory. We magnify your name. Be thou exalted, for you are the King of kings and Lord of lords. There is nobody like you, O Lord. There is nobody like you. You are the great and mighty God. You are the great healer. We return all glory to your name. Thank you for safe operation for today. Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory. We magnify your name, Lord. We glorify your name. At the same time, let's ask the Holy Spirit to take charge of tonight's service. That his power will move. And as many as who come into his presence, they shall not go back the same way they have come. Whatsoever burden that they will come with, it will be laid before him. And they shall go back with a light and glory to his holy name. Let's commit this service into his church. Holy Spirit, take charge. Holy Spirit, take control. Holy Spirit, take control. From the praise and worship unto the redeem, let every service make an impact. Let there be a testimony that will come forth from every moment of this service. Father, we say take control. Holy Spirit, take charge. Holy Spirit, take charge. We commit the man of God that we, God will use to bring the word unto our way this evening. That he shall not speak of his own, but whatsoever the Holy Spirit need, he shall speak to us. And that God shall bless us through him. Whatsoever shall be a distraction as a minister, Father, we come against him. And he shall be focused. His ears shall be open to receive from you. And what you have a passion for us today, Lord, we shall not miss it. Holy Spirit, we say, take charge. Holy Spirit, take charge. As many as are here to be here, let's also commit them into the hands of the God. Let's ask that the Holy Spirit will extend their way. Whatsoever is an interest for them to come to His presence, let the Holy Spirit take it away. Let the Holy Spirit take it away. And they shall be in His presence. They shall appear in His presence. Let us be to thank Him once again for all He has done. Father, we thank You. We give You all the glory. We magnify Your name. For your grace and your mercy, for the blessing you are about to release to us, for the healing that you are about that is about to take place, for the deliverance, Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory. We magnify your name. Let's continue to give it thanks.
yourself a great and mighty God. Let me hear you shout hallelujah. You know they felt that you will not make it to this time. They said you will not make it to this time. If you are that person, lift your voice and say hallelujah. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. If you are excited to be alive, jump up and shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Your hands together for Jesus is worthy of praise. Joy overflows my heart. I sing a new song to
Jesus. I want you to celebrate Jesus with your clap offering tonight. Celebrate the King of Kings. Celebrate the Lord of Lords. Celebrate the Lord that is, the Lord that was, the Lord that is to come. Celebrate the giver of life tonight. Appreciate him with your clap offering. For he is a good God. He is a mighty God. He is a mighty man in battle. He is a God of a class of his own. None can be compared to him. Is the Jehovah over to you? Why don't you say hallelujah to Jesus? Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Let's speak about hymn books as we sing from hymn number 42 on page 35. Oh, my God. 
Hallelujah. Let's have a seat in God's presence. There's nobody like our God. There's nobody like Jesus. Are you really sure? Don't somebody next to you and say, nobody like my God. You know when, when like, maybe as a little child, you have a, an elder brother that has all the muscles and power, you can boast with him. So boast like that. Tell somebody, nobody like my God. You know how you can boast, boast about nobody like my God. Nobody can do what Jesus has done for us. I mean, if you believe it, if you believe it, say hallelujah. hallelujah. So we just want to worship him tonight and tell him nobody like you, oh God. In heaven and on earth, nobody like you. For the the seas, all places, no one is compared to our God. His grace and mercy is full and available to us. He's worthy to be praised. Worship you, Jesus.
can appreciate God. We are supposed to be appreciating our God. You cannot stop appreciating him wherever you are. Clap your hand and give God praise in the house. Amen. Amen. You can stop clapping if you know God has done enough for you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want you to hold the hand of the person next to you. Hold the person's hand. Hold the person's hand. Look at the person eyeball to eyeball. Say, I can feel your testimony coming. No, they never hear you for village. The devil is not afraid of that voice yet. And they are not hearing you on the other side. Now hold the other person. Hold the other person. Look, I'm eyeball to eyeball. Say no weapon. Fashioned. Imagined. Created. Orchestrated. Against you. Can prosper. Because as I look at you. I see your victory. Let me hear that amen like thunder. Now put your hand on your chest. Put your hand on your chest. Put your hand. Say I'm too loaded. Oh, they cannot hear you in the village. Say, I'm too loaded. I'm too loaded. That voice is not shaking. Yes, say, I'm too loaded. I'm too loaded. To, be empty. to be empty. Now, put your hand on your head. Say, my head is a good head. My head is not a bad head. This, my head, is not permitted to be a failure. This, my head, is not permitted to be frustrated. This head, this, my head, we be the head and not the tail. Now celebrate Jesus in the house. Amen. Please open your Bible very quickly. I'll try and be brief. And let's go to the book of Ezekiel chapter 37. As we read our theme scripture. Ezekiel chapter 37. And we'll be reading from verse 1 to 14. If you are there, say amen. amen. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were many in the open valley and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered and said, O Lord God, thou knowest. And he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus said the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and bring upon bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and ye shall live and ye shall know that i am the lord so i prophesy someone say i prophesied someone say i prophesied as i was commanded and as i prophesied there was a noise now look for somebody you have not spoken to look at the person say there is going to be a noise Oh, they cannot hear you yet. Say, there's going to be a noise. And behold, a shaking. And the bones came together. Bone to bone. Father, bless your word. Holy Spirit, do what you have already started in our lives. That your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. By the grace of God, I want to be talking about or preaching on the topic that God laid in my heart that says, I will fight my battle at the gate. Somebody say, I will fight my battle, will fight my battle. At, the at the gate. Let me announce to those of you who are afraid of battles that it is a battle you face that registers your name in the spirit realm. Some of us feel that this life we live, we are supposed to live our life peacefully, wake up in the morning, Everything goes according to plan. You go to bed at night. 
A wise man once told me that if the devil is not troubling you, you are on the devil's side. Are you understanding what I'm saying? If the devil is not troubling you, you are on the devil's side. Our life is made to have battles. That is why the Bible tell, tells us that we wrestle not. We wrestle not. To wrestle means to fight. To wrestle means to go into battle. So since the days of John the Baptist, even till now, the kingdom of God suffered peacefulness. That's what you talk about. So the kingdom of God suffered violence. And the violent shall take it by what? It means the violent must go into battle to collect what God has predestined for me. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Apostle Paul said, I have fought the good fight. There is a battle that has your name written on it. Your pastor cannot fight it for you. Your prayer leader cannot fight it for you. I cannot fight it for you. No amount of laying of hands will fight it for you. Until you get on your knees and make the pronouncement by yourself, you will remain in that place. And unfortunately, a lot of us, that is the challenge that we have been facing. You have been depending on A to pray, on B to pray. You have paid people money to fast and pray for you. You have given the prayer ministry enough food to come to your house and have all night. They've been doing it for years, but nothing has happened. I announce to you that that battle has your name written on it. Until heaven hears your voice, nothing will happen. Do you understand what I'm saying? Until heaven hears your voice, nothing will happen. And tonight, I come with what I call a catalyst that will provoke somebody into warfare. Somebody is not catching that thing this night. I come with a catalyst that will provoke somebody into warfare. That is why the Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord came upon Ezekiel and God told Ezekiel, prophesy. In other words, open your mouth and begin to what? Decree and declare. Open your mouth and go into battle. Now, it is not as if God could not orchestrate the dry bones to form. But he was putting the word into Ezekiel's mouth. Say, oh yeah, what do you see? He said, now as you see him, now I see him. That is not how it should be. At times, God wants you to call into being that which is not physically seen. That only your spirit can connect with. And that is the battle we are going to face this night. A battle that we go into with an assurance of victory. I didn't hear that, amen. Yeah. I will repeat what I just said. There is a battle that we are going to go into today with an assurance of victory. Yeah. I will say it one more time. Two people at the back didn't catch it. I said there is a battle that has your name written on it. That you are going to go into today with an assurance of victory. Yeah. One person at the back is still sleeping. I'm announcing it to you, whether you believe it or not, that there is a battle you will go into. Let me make somebody afraid this time. God is going to bring the battle to your doorstep. Some people won't run. You don't feel wrong. What are battles? They are definitions that God dropped in my spirit. Number one, battles are divinely initiated opposition created to test our character. Created to do what? To test our character. To test our resolve. There comes a time when God feels that he has pumped you enough to stand back and see what you are going to do. And unfortunately, most times we let God down because we run from pillar to post. And that is why we go round and round the mountain. We keep going round the mountain because we are afraid to confront the mountain. No wonder God told these people, we say, you have gone round this mountain long enough. And I'm announcing to somebody, you have gone round that trouble, that trial, that tribulation. You have gone round it long enough. Your father fought it. 
Your grandfather fought it. Your great grandfather fought it. Your ancestors fought it. And now you are fighting it. I want to transfer it to your children. Somebody say, God forbid. I didn't hear you. Somebody say, God forbid. I will fight my battle at the gate. For when you fight at the gate, then you have access. Do you understand what I'm saying? You fight the battle and then you have access. I said battles are divinely initiated opposition created to test our character. To test our resolve. Before Jesus was thrust into the, the realm of being celebrated, even though he was God, he was led by the spirit of God into the battlefront. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Matthew chapter 4. He said the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of God led Jesus where? Into the wilderness, into the battlefront. The same way we are talking about, say the hand of the Lord came upon Ezekiel and led him to the mountain top. Is that what we read? Is that what was in your Bible? He said, and the hand of the Lord came upon Ezekiel and led him to the mountain top where everything was okay. No! He said the spirit of the hand of God was upon him and the spirit led him where? Into the valley that was dry. Dry bones everywhere. The same way the spirit of the Lord led Jesus into the wilderness. Because there was a battle that had his name written on it. That until he went into that battle and came out victorious, angels could not minister to him. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you read Matthew chapter 4, I've talked about this before. The angels waited until Jesus got to a point where he looked at Satan and said, Get thee behind me. Until he made that declaration, angels did not move to minister. Why? Because everybody was at attention. The victory was the signature that approved him into his mandate. Do you understand what I just said? I said that victory was his signature. That approved him into his mandate. Revelation tells us that it is those who are victorious that we do what? That we wear the crown. There must be a battle. Am I speaking to somebody today? I don't know what has been chasing you. There are challenges that you've had before now. I sense in my spirit that bodies, you have, you have fasted, you have prayed. But you have been doing that from a place of dejection from a place of frustration from a place of of i don't know but now you are going to face that battle from a place of victory yeah. there's a difference between fighting a battle from the place of defeat and fighting a battle from the place of victory amen, amen. what are battles Battles are contradictions. I like this. Battles are contradictions that are divinely orchestrated to push you into gear. I will repeat that again. Say, battles are contradictions that are divinely orchestrated to do what? To push you into gear. Now look at 1 Samuel chapter 4. 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 4 and 5. Talking about Penina and Hannah. We all know the story. You can put it in the screen so that they can see it. I read. See, and he gave to Penina his wife and all her sons and daughter portions. But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion for he loved Hannah. Talking about the husband. But the Lord did what? Shot her womb. It's in your Bible. Please put it on the screen. Who shot the womb? Who shot the womb? Now that is a contradiction. Why would God shut her womb? Here was a woman that was dedicated, but God shut her womb. Why? Because life was too easy for her. The husband loved her so much that the husband was pampering her. Everything she wanted, the husband gave to pamper her. So life was too easy. So in, to, to kickstart her spiritual revolution, the Bible says God did what? Shut her. Why? Number one, to make her adversary provoke her into fasting. You hear what I just said? Because God shut her womb, Penana and Co. mocked her. 
Is that not correct? And because of the mockery, what did she do? She went into the battlefront. If God had not shut her womb, she would not have gone into the battlefront. And she would have been spiritually mediocre. And her name would not have been registered as the mother of that great prophet. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So there are certain battles that God will put together and push it your way. Now, if you don't have revelation, you say life, they say, which kind of life is this? Which kind of problem is this? I pay my tithe, I go shush. But look at what is coming here. It is a battle that is supposed to be a stepping stone. Are you understanding what I'm saying? It is a battle that is supposed to be a stepping stone to your next level. We would not have been talking about David if David had not confronted Goliath. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, that is the next level we are going to go to. That says that battles are channels through which God puts his script into action. Mm. How many of you know that Saul was a trained and well-groomed warrior? How many of you know that? King Saul in the Old Testament. How many of you know that his son, Jonathan, was also a trained warrior? Actually, if you study 1 Samuel preceding chapter 17, you will find out that they had gone into battle and defeated the Philistines without weapon. Actually, Jonathan and his armor bearer went into war alone and defeated them. So these were not new entities to them. But a battle that is not your own will make you afraid. Somebody didn't catch what I just said. <laughs> a battle that is not your own will make you afraid. That is why when Goliath confronted them for 40 days and 40 nights, the Bible said that the same Goliath that they probably had seen before because they had gone into battle before. The same Goliath that they had seen before they saw him on that particular day and when Goliath started talking, the Bible says Saul, Jonathan and all the men of war they were what? They were afraid. A battle that is not your own will make you afraid. But then a young man came who was not a gladiator. Who was not a trained soldier in the physical sense of it. But who had understanding that for every battle that comes my way is a stepping stone. Because the battle, not you go fight her. But now you go fight her. Somebody not understand when I talk. I won't confuse somebody here now. And so David comes into the battlefront. The same thing that they have been hearing that made them afraid. Even though they were better equipped, David did not come with armor and all that, but he had understanding. The same way some of you will catch understanding this night. Yeah. And because he confronted, if you read that scripture, you will find out, and we'll go down and look at it, you will find out that he ran towards Goliath. First Samuel chapter 17, verse 40, you can read it. The Bible says that he did what? He ran towards is that normal? Somebody talk to me. Is it normal? No. Because Goliath was equipped, the physical description of Goliath, you will find out that Goliath, by description, was a giant. Is that not correct? Intimidating. The same way some of the battles you are going to face will look intimidating. We look intimidating. But you will defeat that Goliath. And I'll add this. I've said it before, but I'll say it again for emphasis. Any battle that is your own, nobody else can fight it for you. That is why it was only David that could make Goliath fall. Why? Because there was a divine plan by God to announce David as the next king. There is a divine plan to announce somebody here into the next level. Yeah. There is a divine plan to push somebody here into the next level of promotion, yeah. into the next level of wealth, yeah. 
into the next level of connection. Amen. But there's a battle that has your name written on it. A battle that only you will fight. Somebody say, I will fight my battle at the gate. I will fight my battle at the gate. Before you go into battle, there are some things that I want to drop into your spirit. Some, some of these things, you already know it. Some of it, maybe you knew it, but you didn't catch the revelation of what you were hearing. There are certain things that you must know before you go into battle. In the case of David, David understood where his weaponry was. Because Saul called him and said, come and wear my armor. Is that not so? Come and take my sword. Come and take my shield. And I want to believe that at that time, Saul's weapon would have been the best because he was king. But David understood. He understood where the source of the empowerment is coming from. He understood the source of the victory. He understood the times. Because not be every battle that they fight. But there are some battles that you must fight. So number one ingredient is this. Say in Ecclesi Ecclesiastes chapter 3. It says for everything there is a time and there is a season. There is a time of peace and there is a time of war. So knowing the battle to fight is key. Are you understand what I'm saying? David knew that this Goliath, now my battle, I will fight it now. If he didn't have that understanding of the time, we won't be talking about King David today. Knowing the battle to fight is key. Amen. First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32, a very familiar scripture. And the children of Issachar, which were men that had what? Understanding of what? Of the times. It is time to fight. Not time to give territory. Not time to back down. Not time to go around in circles. It is time to confront. It is time to challenge. For the weapons of our warfare. It is time to put it into practice. Amen. Amen. Number two. 1 John chapter 5 verse 4. For whosoever is born of God. Does what? Overcome the world. And this is the victory that overcome the world. Even our what? Even our what? Our faith. To go into battle, you must discipline your faith. You must discipline your faith. For without faith, Bible says, it is what? You cannot have a connection with the source of your empowerment without faith. There is a kind of energy that you get, spiritual energy that you get when your faith is activated. There is a kind of confidence that comes from within when your faith is activated. Say, so for as many as received him, to them he gave what? Power to become. Even to them that what? Even to them that have faith. Even to them that have faith. You must put your faith to test. You must learn how to discipline your faith. Our weapons as Christians is not tied to how much muscle you have. It's not tied to how much scripture you can quote. Now to quote scripture is good. To know scripture is good. But the secret to those who have spiritual identity is tied to the level of their faith. What do you believe as a child of God? Not what people hear you say. There's a difference between what you say in public. Because the battles are not fought in public. Are you understand what I'm saying? Yes, Only three people now understand. I will repeat it. May the best for back hear me. I say the battles are not fought in what? In public. Everybody has something that they are fighting. 
It is the level of your faith that gives you energy to continue. Because you have an assurance. My own take me, it take me time. I can share my testimony. After 18 years of marriage, my wife just delivered a lovely baby girl last week. They clap sweet, Abby. Very sweet. But through that 18 years, you pray for people, they go deliver. You pray for people, they go marry. But you own the hang. You hear all sorts. You know, somebody made a joke. He said, those when they hold microphone, they preach. When they wear coat, they coat, they hide plenty things. They hide plenty things. There are battles that people have to face. I remember when my, my wife had the first miscarriage, triplets, just like that. After four months, no explanation. Just like that. Second one, twins. Just like that. Third one, twins. Just like that. Now be home. <laughs> now the matter with the talk so. And then people will come and begin to tell you different things. You know, in the days of old, native doctor na shrine of the day. That time you go no see na jasma you they go. <laughs> no, you because they go tie palm front for waist. I mean, not be so. Then you go go meet them for bush. But devil can't no say that one or they walk again. So now the native doctors they get laptop. <laughs> oh yes, they have laptop. You have hospitals now that are shrines. You have churches. Now just not there. there. <laughs> but if you don't have understanding of who your God is, the battle will overwhelm you. So had good intention when he said, Take my armor. People will come and tell you, ah, I know this place. And the doctors there, they know what they are doing. Once you just go there, I mean, once they look at your wife, there's a the way they will just give her some chemicals to drink. Then if you want twins, you give 2.5 million. If you want triplets, make it like 3 million. There be God. When they mix chemical to determine twins, then I just man. And people go, people fall for these things. I look my wife. Women are strong, go. I look her. He look me. He say, if God not given to us, we not want. If God not give us, we not want him. I look in face, he look my face. He don't know it in the go for my mind. Now me and my mind, you not concern her. But women are strong. But 18 years. When she told me, because she won't do one kind. When she now told me that, look, one month, two more don't pass. I said, the battle don't come. That was a battle that I knew this was a battle. You know when things are strong? Huh? Let me talk to men. Women, close your ear. You know, there are certain things that you will see. Only you go naked, pray for house. Go tell your children, I go sleep. You will lock them for inside house. Only you go come outside. Naked for outside. Father! <laughs> so people understand what I'm talking about. If you know what I'm talking about, let me hear your email. <laughs> but I knew that that battle was a battle that had our name written on it. Our strength was the level of faith that we had. That God 
cannot bring us this far and leave us here. God cannot bring you this far and leave you there. But there is a battle that you must fight. To tell God that you are like him. Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, yes. For everything that God told Ezekiel to say, God did not tell Ezekiel, talk with him to your belly. And what did he tell him? God didn't tell Ezekiel, speak what is in your say, say what I have said. It was a transfer of identity, a transfer of authority, a transfer of power. It was now left for him to either believe what God has said or leave it beside. Do you understand what I'm saying? Today, somebody will look at that confrontation and remember what God has said. That no weapon fashioned against me can prosper. Yeah. Are you understand what I'm saying? To overcome the battle at the gate, you must control what you speak within and what you speak without. Most times that's where our problem comes. You are saying something with your mouth and you are saying something different with your heart. You are receiving something with your mouth, but you are doubting it with your heart. If you study the Bible, everybody that faced a spiritual battle, the first thing you hear is, and they said to themselves, and she said to herself. Do you understand? The woman with the issue of blood, what did she do? She said to herself. The prodigal son that left home, when he now realized that, look, 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 I am not where I'm supposed to be. He did what? He said to himself. To energize your strength for battle, you must control what you say to yourself. When David confronted Goliath, Goliath said, David did what? Said, while Saul and the other soldiers listened, accepted, received what was being said, it now affected what they were saying on the inside. This battle is too great for me. But David came, looked at the battle, and as Goliath they talk his own, I know they hear his own. I go talk the thing when God don't say, make I talk. Are you understand what I'm saying? The first assignment that God gave to man was what? Those of you know the Bible. In the Garden of Eden. Huh? To do what? To name everything. Now the question I ask is, who gathered the animals for man? Now God. Have you noticed so? God gathered the animals, brought the animals to man and said, okay, do what? Give them name. The same way God told Ezekiel, prophesy. Do you understand? So there are battles that will come your way. God will bring the battles your way and then stand back and look to hear the name when you won't give them. Small man will say this battle goes. No, it's Martino. No, it's Martino. This also. I'm not sure if it's complete. Wow. This life, so we'll go figure out how much they pay us. Now you laugh over it, but you see, that is a statement that determines what happened before you even go into battle. Control it. What comes out from your mouth? Control it. What is spoken in your heart? Control it. Say, out of the abundance of where the mouth go. Control it. Somebody say, I will control it. And I will close with this. Be wary of deceptions. Make your eye open for why you. Be wary of deceptions. Second Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. 
So let Satan should get an advantage over us, for we do what? We are not what? We are not ignorant of his devices. We are not what? Ignorant. There, there, there are deceptions that the devil will initiate. There are manipulations, there are plans, especially when the devil knows that you are close to victory like you are now. I didn't hear the amen. 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 Only two people now understand that. I will repeat it again for their sake. I say there are deceptions and manipulations that the devil will bring your way. Especially when he knows that you are close to victory as you are now. Amen. Judges chapter 14 and verse 5. Talking about something. If we're there, I want us to read it together because there are key points I want us to pick from there and then we'll pray with it. Judges chapter 14 and verse 5. And the lords of the Philistine came unto her. Is that in your Bible? And the lords of the Philistines came up to her and said unto her, talking about uh, Delilah. Judges chapter 14 verse 5. Is that not in your Bible? Let's go up. Let's go up. Anyway, let me continue because of time. So if those of you that can check the Bible, and the lords of the Philistines came up to her and said unto her, entice him and see wherein his great strength lieth. Somebody can check as I continue. Check to get that scripture as I continue. George is talking about something. When Delilah came to tempt him to get his strength. Judges chapter 16 verse 5. Thank you very much. Let's put that on the screen. Judges chapter 16 and verse 5. Judges chapter 16 and verse 5. That is it. Thank you very much, madam. And the laws of the Philistines came on unto her and said unto her let's say it together what did they say unto her number one what did they say entice. i cannot hear you entice. i cannot hear you entice. entice him i'm talking about the deceptions of the enemy number one do what entice and that's our first prayer point every enticement of the enemy to derail me from my victory I come against you now. Amen. Entice him. What does it mean to entice? The devil knows that there's always something that will get your attention. There is always something that will get your attention. And that is what the devil will use to distract you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because the devil knows that if he gets that thing to pray, go hard you. Your will to fight will be gone. In the case of David, how many of you know David was a man of war? The Bible records that he didn't lose any battle. Is that not so? A man of war. He was not afraid of blood. Before you talk one, he's ready to go to war. But when the devil brought his son, Absalom, it was Absalom now that the devil used. His will to fight was gone. Hey, Absalom, my son. Absalom. The will to fight was gone. And if not for his men of war, how many of you know that Absalom would have taken over the throne? Because his will to fight was gone. Every enticement that the devil is going to bring your way. Let's stand up on our feet. Somebody say in the name of Jesus. I cannot hear you. Somebody say in the name of Jesus. Every enticement that the devil will bring my way to weaken me for battle. Today, I separate myself. Open your mouth and fire that prayer. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Let's see, leave that scripture on the screen. Judges chapter 16. Please leave it there. Number one, entice him. To do what? So that we can see where his strength lies. 
The strategy of the enemy is to be able to identify your weak point. Do you understand me? Because when they see where his strength lies, automatically they know where his weakness is. And the devil always wants to come into our lives through our weaknesses. Everybody has a weakness. But the devil will fail. Amen. See, every source of enticement to locate my weakness. Are you understanding what you are praying about today? I'm talking about strategies that the devil deploys. To weaken you so you can't go into battle. Every source of enticement to locate your weakness. Today I separate myself from it. Open your mouth and fire that prayer for yourself. So shall it be in Jesus name. Number one, entice him so that we will see where his great strength lieth. And then, what? So that we will now map out a strategy that we can use. Are you understanding the steps? Number one, entice him. When you entice him, we will know his weakness. When we know his weakness, we will map out a strategy against him. Do you get what I'm saying? Every manipulation of the enemy against me, against you, against your family. Somebody say today. today. Somebody say today. today. Wherever they are coming from. No, I, I don't see people angry in the house. Somebody say today. today. Every, manipulation Every manipulation of the enemy. Of the enemy. Wherever it's coming from. I bind you by fire. I bind you by fire. I bind you by fire. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus name. Let us entice him. To see where his weakness or his strength is. So that we can map out a strategy against him. To do what? To bind him. Are you seeing the steps? When the devil has the strategy against us, that is when he can bind us, keep us in one spot, prevent us from fighting, killing our resolve to stand up against him, but he will fail. Amen. We can bind him. And then after we bind him, what is the last thing there? We afflict him. We afflict him. And when the affliction comes, you don't have a resolve for battle. When the affliction comes, most of the time you get frustrated. From one battle to the other, hey pastor, attire, attire, this church safe. Attire. What has happened now is your resolve is being broken. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Put your hand on your chest. Say, I will not be afflicted. I will not be afflicted. Put your hand on your chest. Say, I will not be afflicted. I will, I will not be bound today, today I, stand I stand upon the authority in the name of Jesus I receive, I receive the empowerment from above and I locate, I locate every, battle every battle that has my name written on it today, today I confront you today I decree victory today, today I confront you open your mouth begin to pray In Jesus mighty name we pray. I'm just laying a foundation for you to take home. Everything we're doing here is just a foundation. We have not even scratched the surface yet. But as you leave here, I want to give you confidence that whatsoever it was that was chasing you, as you leave here with this new revelation, 
you will begin to chase that thing. Yeah. Whatsoever it was that gave you fear before you came here, I'm announcing to you, as you live here, receive confidence. Yeah. Receive strength yeah. to face that battle. Yeah. Now before I close, I want to address those of us who are here and you know that you don't have a relationship with God. I always say this anytime I have the opportunity of preaching. Relationship with God is not what you do for public. It's what you do because of a personal revelation that you need help. Everybody here, at one time in your life, you need help. And that help doesn't come from man because the Bible says, Woe unto he who trusts in the arm of flesh. And I want to give somebody here that opportunity now. You know you need help. But you know that the help you need is not what man can give. And you are here right now. Let me see your hand. Let me see your hand. Quickly. I see the hands. Lift them up. Lift them up. You know you need help. But the help you need is not what man can give. You know it is a help that only God can give. And that is the kind of assignment that my father likes. Because he doesn't want to share his glory with anybody. Lift up your hand. Let me see those hands. Let me see those hands. Repeat these words after me with those hands lifted. My father, I come to you. I don't come to man. I come to you. With my hands lifted up, oh Lord, receive me. I accept you today as the source of my strength, the source of life, and the source of victory. Thank you for taking over my life. Receive all the glory. Father, these ones whose hands are lifted up, I officially hand them over to you. They have come to you. Visit them in a special way Amen. that they would know that this is the hand of God upon their life. I speak it into their life in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody, your hands lifted up. Father, I commit your children whose hands are lifted up into your hand. Lord, give them strength. Lord, give them strength Amen. to face that battle that you have written their name on. Amen. That battle that will announce them in the spirit realm. Amen. That battle that will lift them up into their new level. Amen. Lord, give them strength. Amen. Give them strength. Amen. Help their faith to come alive. Amen. That at the end of the day, your name alone be glorified. Amen. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's have our seat at Kings and Queens. Let's stretch our hand towards the man of God. Father, we thank you for your servant that you have used. We thank you for the word that has been released through him. Lord, the word he has spoken, it shall not stand against him, but he will receive the grace. Every prayer rendered, Lord, we shall come back with testimony. And the last battle we fought shall be the last one we have. The last battle we have lost shall be the last one forever. We shall ever win in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Is anyone worshiping with us for the first time? Could you please wave your hands to Jesus? This is my first time in Escravos Christian Fellowship at Cinema Hall. Praise the Lord. Can we be on our feet? Can we stand on our feet? Praise the Lord. Please just wait for five minutes immediately after the service. Thus, for your sake, we'll go through the major announcement for our activities for the week. Our service days is Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday. Sunday is a Thanksgiving and worship service as you have experienced. Wednesday is a Bible study day where we come and dip deep into the word of God. Friday is a day we come and render our prayers unto God. The time for all the services is 7.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. We have different fellowship centers if this is not your base. We have ECF1, this is ECF1. We have ECF2 at HHI Conference Center. We have ECF3 at EGTL, 
Las Vegas tents. We have ECF 4, Army Barrack, ECF 5, NNPC quarters. All the services, the same time, exception of the one at the Army Barrack, at the Lord God, praise the Lord. The time for that is 12. God bless you for knowing it, please. If we are those, for those on night, let's endeavor to be a part of it. Praise the Lord. There are different units. If you want to serve God, on Thursday is the time for the workers to meet and plan for the weekly activities. Please, 7.30 at the old mess or the community mess or please avail yourself and then you will be allocated to the unit that you wish to be a part of. Praise the Lord. Let's stand on our feet and let's glorify God for the word that has come our way. Give him all the glory that the word that we have received shall not be in vain, but it shall yield fruit. That the battle shall be fought and won at the gate. The last one that is fought shall be the last forever. That every battle we shall fight and win to the glory of God. Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory. We magnify your name. In the precious name of Jesus. You are blessed in the name of Jesus. Because you have come to the presence of God, his presence shall go with you in the name of Jesus. As, the, as we enter the new week, the glory of God shall be shown forth in you in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Give you all the glory. In the precious name of Jesus. Let the sh let's share the fellowship. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now.